In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to test for amperage or a current in a circuit. And stick around because I'm going to show you how to make your own device amperage tester for under $20. Now let's head over to that workbench and get going. So to test the amperage of this DC motor, we've put the series in circuit. And the first step is we're going to put it to the amp setting there. Now we do have our red lead and the amps, and then we'll use our shift. And now we're into the DC amps, which is the line and the dash line underneath it. And as you can see, we've got our hot power wire from the power supply running into our red lead, which runs into our meter back through the meter, out the black common probe, through the common probe there, around to the back of the uh, common on the back of the power supply. So all we should have to do now is plug in the power supply and we'll see the amperage run through the meter and complete the circuit. So we've plugged it in and this DC motor is drawing about 0.63 amps DC. So that's one way to check DC amps. You can also check AC amps in the exact same way. But as you can see, you've got to disconnect wiring from your circuit. So there's a much easier way and safer way to check amperage. And I'm going to show you that next. So to build our device amperage current tester, you're just going to need a clamp-on ammeter. Now this is a fluke. You can get very cheap models from places like Harbor Freight, Lowe's, Home Depot, even on Amazon. Also, you'll just need some sort of an extension cord. It could be an outdoor or indoor, three-prong or two-prong. For my example, I'm going to use a two-prong indoor. And you can see I've already cut mine, but you just need a box knife. And then you'll want to very carefully, with it unplugged, of course, slice right down the center between the two conductors. The idea is you want to safely split a short length of the insulation apart and that's where you're going to hook your clamp around it because you have to clamp this around one wire, the hot wire, not both because it won't work if you clamp it around both like that. It's going to cancel each other out. You're going to get zero amps all the time. So the idea is to separate your two conductors there. That way you can safely clamp around just one and isolate that hot wire. So that's it. Once you've separated your two conductors there, just make sure that both sides still are insulated and not showing any bare copper wire because that could be dangerous and get you shot. So we've got our clamp on ammeter there and our extension cord that's separated the conductors. So that's all we're going to need. We can check any device in the house that plugs into that receptacle and check the current or amperage draw. So to test this out, I have a few different devices. First up is my son's iPad. So we're simply going to plug that into the extension cord that we've modified. Now it is being powered as normal. We'll flip our clamp-on ammeter to the amps AC setting there. Your clamp-on may have a DC setting, so just make sure you're in AC if you're using the uh, extension cord into the wall. And then all we're going to do is simply clamp it around our hot conductor there. As you can see, we're using about 0 0.04 amps, or we're in the milliamp range for the iPad charger, so it's not drawing a lot of amperage. Next up, we have a toaster. Now this should pull a lot more amps when it's powered on. It has the nichrome wires inside that heat up, and that's the part that heats up your toast. So again, we'll put it to the amps AC setting there. Now with it powered off, we're not really using any amps. It's just plugged in right now, so it's not doing anything. Now let's go ahead and turn it on. And as you can see, it immediately jumped up to 6.42 amps AC. It uses quite a bit more amps than the iPad charger. So a toaster oven is one of the higher amp uses around your house, as well as your hot water heater, microwave, and devices like that. They use quite a bit of amperage, and that's why they cost you more money to run. You can move around your house and really plug any device that you want into your extension cord and test it that same exact way. It's very useful for troubleshooting to see if you have a device that's maybe overheating and pulling too much amperage. That could be a sign the device is worn out and needs replaced. So for really a cheap extension cord and a meter that can range anywhere from $10 to $200, but you can really build this for under $20. Just get the cheap 
clamp ammeter and that and your extension cord and you can test anything around your house. So amperage or current is the flow of electrons in a circuit. Higher amperage means those electrons are flowing faster and stronger. Now resistance is the opposition to that flow. So if you have a high resistance circuit, the current is going to be lower. Now one reason you might want to check the amperage or the current around your house, you can test individual devices and see how much amperage those devices are using. The higher the amperage, the higher those devices are going to cost you. Now each device usually has an amperage rating on the tag or the label, so you can easily compare the value that you get in your test to that label. If your test is revealing that it's pulling a much higher amperage than the label says, there's a good chance that device has worn down or is malfunctioning and it needs replaced. As always, if you found value in this video, please, please subscribe to our channel here and watch our next video here.